Director Lawrence Fox is the founder of the Reclaim Party and soon to be hosting his own show on GB News. Um, the contrast between these preening twit striking attitudes in, in Egypt right now and the country they're actually responsible for governing where they're not doing anything about this business at the southern, uh, on the southern shore is very striking. It's striking for all of these virtue signaling uh, things, aren't they? You see the RNLI helping yeah. people along just like the police help along just stop oil. Yeah. It's whichever uh, virtuous cause you can protect. Uh, it's fine. And Rishi's gone. Uh, I mean, Trust lost her job for what? 14 and a half billion quid's worth of corporation tax. Right. And um, Rishi's just lobbed in 16.3 billion of, um, hello, we love you, let's look after the climate. It's absolute madness. And who is in charge of it? Who, ca who genuinely cares? We used to live in a country whereby you looked after your family, you raised your children, and you wished a better life for them. And then if you had any spare money, you looked after everybody else. We now live in a country where you steal off your own countrymen, who've got nothing anyway, right. and you give it to other people. Yeah. It doesn't seem to make any sense to me. No, you made, a, you made a very interesting point there that the markets, which said, OK, Liz Truss, you're done, you're toast, stick a fork in her, you're over, uh, for whatever it was, the 14 and a half billion, you can get away with giving that kind of money uh, away to uh, climate uh, change or to Ukraine or to whatever. It just seems to be whether the markets approve whether you're and it's exactly the same with what you were saying about the uh, the RNLI helping the migrants and the police helping just stop oil uh, you know the police will will harass and, uh, and and detain someone preaching from the Bible in a shopping center because his cause isn't approved and it's the same thing with the expenditure like you can certain causes are approved and certain ones aren't well, I was stopped on the way to the tube today. I was stopped by a gay Indian guy. And he went, are you Lawrence Fox? And I was like, oh, no, we're in trouble here. And he just gave me a huge hug. Right. And he went, I feel really sorry for you being an oppressed minority in your own capital city. Uh, uh. And it's like we, we are trying desperately, desperately to, to undo all of the damage that we've told that we've done, yeah. rather than becoming prosperous and hopeful and and optimistic for our children. And that's the world that most of us want to live in. This guy who I met on the street and, and, and most people I talk to all the time, he's like, we want prosperity, optimism, hope. We don't want Rishi Sunak uh, or Rashid Sanuk telling us. Um, <laughs> that's the official Joe Biden rendering yeah. of his name. And we're about to watch the Democrats, I hope, be uh, hung, drawn and quartered in the mm. midterms as a result of trying to sell this woke politics to your average person. So if a gay Indian dude, and not that I'm trying to be identitarian about it, mm. but he was a gay Indian dude, mm. turns around and says, I'm completely on side with what you say, mm. then you've got, you know, a lot of the public are here going, this doesn't make sense. We don't need to be dragging these guys off boats, and not dragging them, helping them down yeah, off yeah, boats. Yeah. It, 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 it's about, you know, if you want to come into England, come in legally. Well, let me ask you about that, because there's a con I'm always astonished if I just they mention this on the BBC in the on the BBC. The migrant thing is presented as a humanitarian crisis. Oh. In other words, the solution is to find a way to process all these nice young Albanians with their talent for drugs and prostitution and everything uh, and to just process them far more expeditiously. Whereas, in fact, what uh, particularly Tory voters want is just for these guys not to set foot on land and for them to be turned back and go back to France or Albania. They absolutely should be. Mm. I'm really sorry, but uh, if there are more Albanian men in British prisons than there are in Albanian prisons, mm. uh, Albania is not, as far as I know, a war zone. No. Then this is economic migrants. Mm. Uh, and then we make a government plan. They legislate for economic migrants and they go, right, we need the X number of economic migrants to fulfill X number of jobs in the British economy, which will help grow the British economy. Mm. But just this unfettered, virtuous, welcome, welcome. I'm like, all right, mate you know, from your little charity saying mm. that Suella Braverman's cruelty camp, 
you fill up your house with um, Albanians mm. and then we'll have a chat because they're the exact thing they accuse us of. We're common sensical. We're saying we want people in this country. We're a welcoming, tolerant country. We watch the disaster of multiculturalism. Yeah. I mean, the disaster of multiculturalism in this country. Mm. And we need to adopt a, a, a different system, which is like you cut across the 11, bo 11 mile border and we'll come up to you with a rubber boat and we'll bump back into you and send you back to Johnny Frenchy. Yeah. Which is what would, uh, which is what you get the feeling Suella Braverman would like to do. Uh, you can't solve a problem if you can't identify it accurately. And if uh, she wants to identify it as ensuring that these people never set foot on British soil, isn't the answer then just to pull out of the European Court of Human Rights? And anything that sort of doesn't actually get you there is only going to mean more of what we see every night. Well, it's tricky because we've got a Nick, Articles 8 and Article 10 from mm. the EHCR anyway, uh, for the UK law. But yes, fundamentally, we need to get the hell out of it yeah. because we, we have a wonderful, prosperous country. No one has given us a vision post-Brexit. No one has turned around to us <coughs> and said, this is what the UK is going to look like post-Brexit. Yeah. They've just gone, right, we'll just do more of the same. We need some proper, proper leadership. But I, we do need Article 8 and we do need Article 10. So it's, it's tricky. Well, well, the thing is, that's, that thing dates from 1950. Yeah. And it's, it's weird because there's nothing. I mean, if you walk around central London, there's nothing really left of 1950. And if you were to propose, you'd say, where, where did all the chaps in uh, Bowler Hats go? Why isn't homosexuality illegal? But somehow Protective. this particular bit of 1950, from a completely changed world back when one continent, Europe, owned another continent, Africa, in its entirety. This one little bit of 1950 is now and forever, according to all the progressives. Well, you don't have a country if you don't have a border. Mm. America is about to vote on this this evening. I mm. think the border, uh, energy prices, all of these things are going to be voted on. Mm. Crime and all this mm. stuff is going to be voted on tonight. But if you do not have a border, you do not have a country. And we do not have a border in this country. And that is a major problem for the United Kingdom. Uh, how many of the... T uh, occasionally you'll hear a Tory backbencher say something broadly reflective of his party's base on this, but how many are just joking and just actually uh, are just figuring there's nothing can be done about it, you just need to, sp to string it out for the last couple of years of totally non-conservative government? Well, they, they, yeah, I mean, it is sad that the... the but look, Rishi's done some good things. He's put mm. Suella in, he's mm. put Kemi in. So mm. he's got the support of those two people. Kemi's mm. amazing on culture and Suella actually mm. means it when she says invasion. It's the right word. Yeah. You know, yeah. as much as they hate it, it's yeah. the right word. And you need strong language to deal with strong problems. Mm. So as long as um, uh, Rashid Sanuk really backs, <laughs> really backs his, his equalities <laughs> minister and, um, and his home secretary and he allows them to do most of the legwork, seeing as he spent the last... Uh, 45 years in Prada loafers, yeah. then we'll, we'll but, see what will happen. Well, do you think it communicates weakness, him saying, oh, I'm not going to bother going to COP27, my yeah. place is here taking care of you poor people, and then he, oh, sorry, I got that wrong, and then he goes off to this COP What's thing. he doing at COP27? What's COP27 got to do with the British voter? Uh. What on earth has it got to do with the person who decides what they vote for? It's a, it's a supernatural globalist nightmare. I want to vote for the policies that go on in my country. Yeah. Not, I don't want Rishi to hop on his plane, stick his poppy on his very well-fitted shirt and his Prada loafers, and then tell me <laughs> what's going to happen with uh, having been honoured to meet Greta. No, that was Jerry, Jeremy Vine. But it, yeah. it's, Oh, God. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, British people who pay their taxes want to have a say about what their taxes go on. Well, they're, they're old-fashioned enough to think that the government of the United Kingdom should be preoccupied with the government of the United Kingdom. It's, uh, it's very, weird, it's that, very weird that saving the planet evidently appears to them than uh, more than saving the southern coast. Thank you very much, uh, Lawrence, and we can't wait for your show. Uh, you don't know when it starts, and I don't think we're sure. It's uh, what is it, Monday to Thursday, eight eight p.m. That's uh, right. Yeah, there's, there's... Mark, bad news. <laughs> Game over. There's nothing on then anyway. Uh, thank you, Lawrence. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Uh, GB views at gbnews.uk.